Welcome everyone. It is Wednesday night at Beacon of Hope in Clearwater, Florida. We're glad you can join us here on Facebook. We have Zoomies, we have Roomies, and we have popcorn tonight, which has been very good so far during prayer meeting. So we're happy about all that. Uh, this week and next Wednesday night, we will be finishing up the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we've been studying for the last few weeks. And uh, tonight we are on the power gifts. There are three of those. So there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Those are all found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You can read it on your own. We've already gone through the first six. So this is seven, eight, and nine, but we're going to only do number seven tonight, which is the gift of faith. And we're gonna talk about faith. Uh, one of the definitions that is not original with me, but I love this definition of faith that I have put on the board here for everybody. Faith is acting like God told you the truth. I even have a t-shirt. I had a t-shirt made uh, that has that saying on it, and I like that because faith is really believing that what you read in the Bible is true, and the promises that God gives you are right on. They're true, and you can, you can stand on those promises. You can take them to the bank, if you will. So uh, the gift of faith, uh, it, we're going to discuss we're going to talk about it a little bit, but we're going to start right now tonight with Luke chapter 7. And I'm in the Passion Translation tonight, for those of you who like to follow along on your phone in a different translation. Uh, the Passion Translation is very good, very accurate, and very much in the way we talk today, which helps us understand things. After Jesus finished giving Revelation, this is Luke chapter 7, verse 1. To the people on the hillside, he went on to Capernaum. Capernaum. There he found a Roman military captain who had a beloved servant he valued highly. Now, for those of us that are watching The Chosen, or in Chosen chapter season three right now, which we're going to start showing here on Wednesday night in about three weeks, uh, I'm wondering if this is Gaius. I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it made me wonder when I started reading it. Those of you who are watching The Chosen know who Gaius is. Yep. Roman military captain who had a beloved servant he valued highly. The servant was sick to the point of death. When the captain heard that Jesus was in the city, he sent some respected Jewish elders to plead with him to come and heal his dying servant. I'm wondering, Jim, if this... Roman is going to turn out to be Gaius. It's Gaius. I'm convinced Oh, it's okay. Gaius. Well, there you go. If our scholar says it's Gaius, I bet it is. Did he not say something about his little slave who grew up with his yeah. son? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. where that was the... He yeah. raised him like his son because his mother had passed or died. Yes. That's the died. hint. Okay. Yes. He's going to be... And he's, and he's changed. Gaius has changed. Yes, Gaius has, has changed. Sure has. Sure has. So when the captain, if his name is not here, this is the name from the, the show, The Chosen, heard that Jesus was in the city, he sent some respected Jewish elders to plead with him to come and heal his dying servant. And I can see the character in The Chosen doing that, can't you? Uh -huh. yep. Getting a hold of Peter or some of his friends and saying, please come heal my, my servant. So they came to Jesus and they told him, the Roman captain is a wonderful man. If anyone deserves to have a visit from you, it is him. I find that interesting that they said to Jesus, this guy deserves to have a visit from you. Interesting. Won't you please come to his home and heal his servant? For he loves the Jewish people. Now that would go along with Gaius. And he even built our meeting hall for us. Jesus started off with them, but on his way there, he stopped by friends of the captain who gave this message. Oh, wait a minute. He was stopped by. I didn't read that correctly. Verse 6 and 7 of Luke chapter 7. On the way there, he was stopped by the friends of the captain who said, Master, don't bother to come to me in person. This is interesting. I think he would be that, that kind of attitude too. Very humble. Don't bother to come to me in person for I am not good enough for you to enter my home. I'm not worthy enough to even come out to meet one like you. Let's talk about that a minute. Last Sunday sermon, I was teaching on the trifecta of overcoming insecurity, inferiority, and 
and unworthiness, right? Well, you see unworthiness right here. The captain is saying, wait a minute, I'm not even worthy. He's humble. He's humble. You see hum humility. And he says, but, and here's where we see faith come in. If you would just release the manifestation of healing right where you are, I know my young servant will be healed. In other words, the centurion is saying, if you just think it, or speak it or whatever. I know my servant's good. What do you see there? What's the word we're talking about tonight? The gift of what? Faith. The gift of faith. I think it's the gift of faith right here. The gift of faith is more than saying, I hope this happens. Right? Okay. What does Hebrews 11.1 1 say? And I put some of these scriptures on the board up here. What's it, Anybody know what Hebrews 11.1 1 says? Okay. By faith, something's overcome. Yeah. So about the crowd witnesses. Yeah. That's Hebrews 12. Yeah. You're close. Okay, Hebrews 11 1 wow. is saying faith Thank is the, the assurance, the assurance oh. of things, things hoped for, seen. Hope not for, seen. And the evidence of things not seen. Yep. Right? Yes. So the servant cannot see yet, right, that his servant's healed. But in his heart, faith rises up in his heart. This is what God wants for us to grow in our lives. Faith to rise up. Even though we can't see it yet. That's why the sentence I just said to you that I hope you wrote down. Faith is acting like God told you the truth. Okay? So this servant says, you know what? If you, Jesus, if you just release the manifestation. Right where you are. I know my servant. This young servant will be you. And in verse uh, 8. Unlike you. I am just an ordinary man. So this is humility right here from this centurion. Everybody see where I am, verse 8? Mm -hmm. Yet I understand the power of authority, and I see that authority operating through you. And then he talks about having soldiers under him. And in the last part of verse 8 of Luke chapter 7, the centurion says, So, Master, just speak the word, and healing will flow. If you take notes, write that phrase down. The centurion says, just speak the word, and healing will flow. Is that a true concept when we begin to walk in faith in our lives? Yes. Yes. So when we speak the word, what God's word says about our situation, and we claim it, and we stand on it, and it says here, and healing will flow. So, healing and miracles. So, if you take notes, look up there. These last three are faith, miracles, and healings. We're only going to talk about faith tonight because miracles and healings are based on the first one, faith. Mm -hmm. Right? Without faith, without faith, what? It is impossible to please God. That's Hebrews 11.6. Put that in your notes. Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, that, does, that verse in, in Hebrews eleven six does not say, without becoming a pastor or evangelist, you cannot please God. No. Faith is something we can all have. Right? So now look at another verse I put on the board, and that's Romans 10, 17. Can anybody quote that one? Who? Who? I know you can. Romans 10, 17 says this. Faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of, by God. The word of God. God. So when you get the word of God in you, here's what's going to start happening. Your faith will rise. Does everybody see that? The more of the more junk we take in, negativity, um, just terrible movies or uh, a bunch of stuff that doesn't glorify God, whether it be <laughs> video games that are bad or whatever it might be, the more we do all that, our faith level goes down, right? The more we sit in worry and fear, what happens to our faith level? We're in fear. Down, okay? What happens when we begin to praise God? Okay, I'm going to use my thumb right here. Everybody ready? So when we, when we begin, to, we're in fear and anxiety, faith level goes down. When we begin to praise God and remember how great he is, uh, right? Uh, when we get a script
scripture and we say, you know what, I'm not good at memorizing, but I'm going to get this verse down. I'm going to dwell on it all day. What happens to your faith level with just one verse? goes up. Okay. What happened to the centurion? He had been around the disciples and Jesus and saw miracles. What happens when you see answers to prayer? What happens to your faith level? goes up. We have this jar here already. It's getting tons of answered prayers in it from the prayer bowl where they start out in the prayer bowl and they go to the jar when they are answered. I don't know about you, and that's why I wanted to do this visual this year with us with prayer. Because as you see those prayers, Connie, can you hold the glass jar up? Look, just look at it, okay? That's just in two and a half weeks. Look how many there are. Answered prayers, okay? I think Betty said we've had 50-some or more. I don't even know how many prayer requests come in. Okay, so what happens when we see an answered prayer? Maybe you've, you've got a terrible headache, and suddenly somebody prays for you, and your headache is gone. What happens to your faith? It goes up. It goes up, okay? Your faith is not going to stay like this. Why? Tell me why it can't stay level. Life happens. Life happens. That's why. Okay? So when we are just going along, we get a bad report, we get a discouraging word from somebody, somebody treats us bad, our faith level tends to go down. We tend to leak. It leaks. Okay? Everybody understand? So if you get to a certain faith level, you're not going to stay there if you don't maintain it, right? If you quit eating and drinking today, what would happen to your weight? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'd like to try that. Huh? I'd like to try that. <laughs> well, um, I know somebody close to me who has not been able to eat very well for a few years yeah. and her weight and her also her strength she has no strength anymore uh, she is force fed and that what happens guys and she's lost probably I can tell you probably 40 pounds or 35 pounds from what she normally was so what happens is when, when we are not increasing our faith our strength decreases. Everybody got that? Yep. So Jesus marveled at him in verse 9. He turned around and he said to the crowd who had followed him, listen, everybody, I love this. Jesus is calling attention to this man's faith. Never have I found even one. Now, this is a huge statement. Among the people of God, a man like this who believes so strongly in me, what was the criteria here for the centurion that caused Jesus to say, this is strong faith? What What was it? Remember? We just read it. That he didn't have to even come he and touch him. He didn't even have to come and touch him. All he had to do was speak, speak the it. word. Speak the word. Right? Does everybody follow that? Everybody getting the lesson here? So important. Jesus said, spoke the healing word from a distance. When the man's friends returned to the home, they found the servant was completely healed and doing fine. Imagine that. Amen. All right. So let's get some. Let's let's. Uh, okay. Here's what I want you to do next. Uh, take one of these, and we're going to read it. And those of you on uh, Zoom, I will send you this as an attachment tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you what this is. Um, you can get take one for anybody else that you want to, too. I made enough. I need another one. Right, so yeah, okay. Lisa's been asking for them, so. <laughs> yeah, take that. I got another one. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. I have a uh, devotional that I bought last year sometime on Amazon by Smith Wigglesworth. How many of you know who Smith Wigglesworth is? 1800s, all kinds of miracles, right? There is a devotional called the Smith Wigglesworth Devotional on Amazon. If any of you wants to get it, wants to get it. It's this thick. It's this thick. It's a devotional for every day. And it's some of his teachings, some of his experiences with miracles. Okay? It's amazing. And this is what his post was yesterday. January 24th. By the way, he's been dead probably at least 100 years, probably more than that. Close to it. 
that <clears throat> he's talking here about Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs. Let's go to Acts chapter 6, verse 8. The one we just read about is Jesus himself. I'm going to get you to ask some questions and all that in a minute. All right, but let's go to Acts 6, 8. And let's make some points here about Stephen. Stephen was not one of the disciples. Okay, did y'all know that? Yeah. He was not one of the disciples. Not one of the twelve. No, well, not one of the twelve. He was a follower, for sure. Um, and let's start with verse 7 of Acts 6. God's word reigned supreme and kept spreading. The number of Jesus' followers in Jerusalem quickly grew and increased by the day. Even a great number of Jewish priests came believers and were obedient to the faith. Verse 8, Stephen, who was a man full of grace and supernatural power, performed many astonishing signs and wonders and mighty miracles among the people. This upset some of these guys. And they began to confront Stephen and argue with him. Now, you all know what happened to Stephen? He was stoned to death. He became the first one of the leaders disciples and apostles to die. He was the first martyr. Okay. So Stephen's ability to pray over people and see, he started out, do you know what Stephen started out as? We won't look at the verse I'm going to tell you. What did he start out as? Deacon. A deacon. He started out as a deacon. Okay. A deacon was a person that was serving the tables for all the people and making sure everybody, every day they were eating together common meals. Stephen was one that was appointed to serve meals. Okay, And so he started out in somewhat of a lowly position I suppose. One of us servitude positions. He was a servant. He was a servant, right? By the way, do you know what a minister is defined as? Servant leader. Servant leader. Guys, um, being a minister is being a leader and a servant. And Stephen started out as a servant. Okay? But Stephen began to have more and more ability because he was so full of God. How do we know that he was so full of God? Do you remember when they died? He looked up and saw Jesus. He looked up and he saw Jesus. He, and he, he was okay with them stoning him to death. Go ahead. Well, and he said, Lord, don't lay this sin on them. Mm -hmm. The one thing, well, how is Jesus normally described in heaven? Sitting at, the right. Seated at the right hand of God. And what was he doing when Stephen looked up there? Jesus had stood up to greet Stephen. <laughs> the first Jesus martyr. stood up to meet Stephen. That's really cool. All right, let's look at this. I'm going to read it because of our friends on Zoom and wherever. In the early days of the church, by the way, the title of this devotional yesterday that Smith Wigglesworth wrote many years ago is, January, is Full of Faith and Power. And that's what we need to be, full of faith and power. In the early days of the church, all who did the work of serving, serving had to be full of the Holy Spirit. Did you all see this? Serving meant, hey, this is an important job. Being a servant here in this ministry or other ministries is an important job. Even if it means cleaning the church. Even if it means cleaning bathrooms, whatever. Go ahead, PJ. Acts chapter 6, verse 3. Acts, go ahead, read it. Brothers, choose seven men from among yourselves who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will appoint them to be in charge of this important matter. That was your qualification. And, the, and that will enable us to give more attention to prayer and preaching. So what these guys did, the early deacons, were they were concentrating on serving people meals. Okay. But it, their attitude was extremely important. Stephen's attitude, to really work in the gift of faith, guys, I'm going to say some strong statements here. Are you ready for them? You want to write it down. <laughs> to really be moving in the gift of faith, which is a gift I have asked God for for years and years and years. I have come to know that you have to be a servant to operate in the gift of faith. That is what I have found in my own life. That the more I desire to serve rather than be served allows me to be closer to the nature of God. To grow the Jesus within me because I am a servant leader, right? We can all be that, by the way. 
Stephen was a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. God so manifested himself in Stephen's body that he became an epistle of truth, known and read by all. In other words, he was just who he was, and he spoke truth, okay? He was full of faith. Such men never talk doubtfully. All right, let's look at, if you have an underlying pen, write this, uh, underline this. Here's some attitudes. These kind of men and women never talk doubt. I'm teaching on that this coming Sunday, by the way. Overcoming doubt and despair. Oh. Okay, you never hear them say, I wish it would be like this. Or if it is God's will. They have no ifs. This is Smith Wigglesworth saying this, okay? They know you never hear them say, well, it's not always like that. They say this, it's sure to be. They laugh at impossibilities and cry, it will be done. They shout while the walls are up, and when they come down, they shout. God has this faith for us in Christ. We must be careful that unbelief and no wavering are found in us, okay? And he did mighty things. Go on down in the next paragraph. All things were possible because of the Holy Spirit's position in Stephen's body. Because Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit, God could fulfill his purposes through him. Let's talk about this a minute. Okay? So the gift of faith, in my opinion, is one of the very special gifts that is used to even be able to give a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a, a prophecy. Um, <coughs> It takes faith to open your mouth and say something that God is telling you to say, right? But the gift of faith, I think, is even deeper than just a gift of the Holy Spirit that you're using. I think it, it goes way deep within us that we believe that when Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes, right? When, when in Jeremiah it says, nothing is impossible with God. Okay, so let's talk about what trips us up or how do we keep from even wanting the gift of faith? What happens to our in our human nature where we are like, I don't know if I want that. Might be a lot of responsibility there, James. I would, in personal experience uh, speaking, I would say time. Time. Yeah, because we, we want things now. Oh yeah. We we desire things now. That's a good point. And when it doesn't happen as yeah. fast as we want to, as, as, as often as we want to, or, or you know, whatever. Right. Time to me because our time isn't the same as God's time. God's time isn't near, you know, He created it. So So we're all in a hurry, right? Yeah. We all and so hurry. the more you think Stephen was in a hurry? I don't think these guys were. I think I they were I, I don't think you can have a servant's heart and be in a hurry. I don't think it's oh. possible. Oh. All right. Some comments on that. Can you have a, anybody on Zoom want to comment? Speak up. Can you have a servant's heart but live in a hurry all the time and not? Not in God's service you can't because I have that heart. And when it comes to dealing with people in that servitude position, yeah, this slows down. Hugely. And you got to make the time to do whatever. Yes, when, right? when you see the need, um, I'll give you, for example, last week, uh, Saturday, Saturday afternoon, ran into a, in our street, lady out there uh, on a trike bicycle pulling a cart, and uh, something said, talk to her. I pulled up and asked her, what are you going to do with that wood? She's getting all these old pieces of wood, you know, put them on the side of the thing. And I said, uh, so what are you doing with that wood? I said, use it to heat with or to cook with? And she says, I'm using it to heat with. Instantly, I knew I had wood. I knew that she could use my wood. So I took the time to talk to her, see what I could do to help her <laughs> serve its heart in That's that good. moment. That's good. So I ended up, she works for me. Oh. While I'm out, I'm God has given me work during the week. Yeah. She's at my house doing, doing the power. <laughs> okay. All because of this. I okay. All right. Okay. And if we go back to the story that we started with the centurion, the centurion knew that he had come in contact with the Messiah who could heal his, how many of us have that secret? We know how much Jesus can do, but we're in a hurry or we got something else to do or whatever, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about? 
Mm-hmm. Okay, the gift of faith. I mean, I think that's a good point that James made. I think another part of this is we have to desire it. Mm-hmm. We have to desire to be that person that says, let me pray for you. Can I pray for you right now? Or sometimes that's not appropriate, wherever you might be. But you can say, I said, okay, then I pray for you. Put you on our prayer list. Go ahead, Betty. I think a lot of times I've seen over the years that people are afraid of commitment. Oh, yeah. Can you speak up so the Zoomies can hear you? I thought I thought it was supposed to be loud. Um, I think I said over the years I've seen people that they're afraid of commitment right they're afraid that you know that's going to interfere with what they have to do in their own life which is time but I I think it's a lot of it's um, I I don't have time for that I I, there's no commitment the only thing you can't buy Okay, so I agree with all that. So if you're taking notes on the gift of faith, you have to evaluate your time and whether or not you are, uh, when this, when the centurion comes to Jesus, he wasn't worried about his duties that day. He really wanted his servant to get healed, right? He took the time to go, okay? So commitment's an aspect of this too. So that's why these verses are on the on the board, Hebrews 11, 1, <laughs> Uh, Hebrews eleven six without faith it's impossible to please God. Uh, James five fifteen call for the elders of the church and the prayer of faith will raise them up. Okay. And go ahead. I just want to toss something in here. Don't. It's easy to confuse the gift of faith, which is where we all ought to be operating, because it doesn't take the gift of faith to heal somebody. No, it doesn't. It takes the fruit. And that should be something that grows. You might understand us. that, the difference? Remember, faith is one of the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And we're all allotted a measure of faith. Yes. And that grows by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And it doesn't take the gift of faith to pray for somebody. I always looked at the gift of faith as being like a supernatural, a supercharging of faith for a crisis situation. Right. Okay, I just or a special anointing for a certain type of healing or miracle. Right. Because without going into details, I prayed for so many people of childless couples that hadn't had children, including your daughter, and they have whatever needed to happen in their bodies happened, and they had kids. And that was a special, just not planned by any means, just happened, started happening. Then people, word of mouth, brought more people. So there can be a, quote, unquote, what I want to call a special anointing, a special gift of faith for a certain area. And in a certain situation. Right. um, You know, if, if, if I need, it's kind of like people who, can lift a car because their adrenaline goes so extremely yes, high. Yes. They can lift a car off of somebody. Right. That's kind of what the gift is. There's an immediate, maybe a crisis need. I would say Jesus did that uh, with the widow of Nain, just uh, right around yes. that same place yes. in Luke. He had just happened to be in the city of Nain, saw this widow carrying out her son on the funeral. Funeral. He just walked up to the funeral bier and said, "Get up." And a kid got up. I mean. And then he said, mother, here's your son, or something right. like that, right? And, you know, it's like, that was just this kind of a supernatural anointing of faith. It was an anointing, for a yes. Specific and I think that's more what the gift of faith is than just regular faith. We you all need I mean? to operate in faith continually. Yes. Because, I'm, you know, it takes faith to drive down US-19. Um, <laughs> Amen. Um, but I mean, it takes it takes faith. I have people at work, and I don't call this the gift of faith, but they know I will pray for them. And I've even lost my one coworker, uh, whose partner had cancer. Um, by the way, that should be a praise report. It wasn't. It didn't spread. I think that, that may already be in there. Because um, we prayed about that, that the yeah. cancer wouldn't spread. We and, prayed and specifically that, that specific prayer again. Right, and that was. That was us using the fruit of faith. I mean, the faith that we have. Um, but now if I had maybe run into Andy on the street and he said, pray for me now, that's when I would maybe need that supernatural anointing of faith. 
to pray. Yes, because sometimes we are asked in situations, please pray right now because I am feeling terrible. I'm sick right and then. And that's where it And you have to draw on that reservoir that's within you Amen. where you have built that up because you've been in the Word and you've been learning Scripture and you've been growing your faith. Remember, with the thumbs up, you've been growing it. And so you're giving it, I mean, look out. If you start growing your faith by being in the Word, you know what? You're going to have opportunities to use it. Huh. Yeah, amen. Right? Mm-hmm. Right? So amen. when we have that opportunity, what do we do with it then? Right? We have to use it. Like the centurion. He could have sat there yes. and said, well, I know Jesus can heal. I've seen him do it. But he probably wouldn't want to heal my servant. After all, I'm a Roman. Right. But he didn't have that. He just knew it was possible. He knew it was possible, and he, he, in his heart, knew Jesus would do it. Right. But thoughts, questions? So the gift of faith is when you get to a point in your relationship with God that you want to be used by him to bless others. I think this has a big part, I'm going to write it down as we're talking, I think a big part of the gift of faith is desire. Also, Pastor, can I say something? Yes. Also, Jude, you know, Jude 1, 20, it says, Build, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You have to build yourself up sometimes. You do. It just doesn't happen. And sometimes you just... You have to build up that faith, you know, no. and, and faith comes by the hearing of the Word of God. And sometimes if you just hear the Word of God, it builds your faith. That's right. And that's a great point, and thank you for bringing that up. And it goes back to the thumbs up and thumbs down we were doing a few minutes ago. Because you are responsible for your faith level. I'm not responsible. Even now I'm your pastor. Right. I take responsibility to teach you, like right now. Teach you on Sundays, teach you on the radio, teach you all these other things. I take that responsibility gladly, but when it comes right down to it, I can't make you it's learn not. anything that I teach you. Right. It's up to us to receive it and move in it. That's right. And grow it. So you need to grow it, right? Mm-hmm. It's not something that just happens to you. You've got to put the time in. And, and I was uh, a, Pastor, go on. Sometimes, sometimes Jesus always said to some of some of the things that he responded to. He says, "Great is thy faith." Yes. And others, he said, he said, because there was no faith. He had to, he couldn't to heal the people from where he was from. Was they didn't point. have any faith in him. That's you know? a so, huge good even in those point. Times, you know? That is a very good point, Pat. Because again, we personal responsibility. Okay. When I sign you homework, like this week it was Psalm 37, right? And I'm not going to make you do it. I can't make you do it. You're all your own individual, right? Right. Um, when we are eager, let's put it this way, what made Stephen so different? The first martyr. He's full of the Holy Spirit. He had a servant's heart. He was ministering to people. I think that somebody took his place helping on the on the meals right away because they saw Stephen's over here in the corner. He's not helping to fix the table or he's not cooking the soup. Stephen's over there. Oh, my gosh, that blind eye just got healed. I think that's what happened to Stephen, and he transitioned from deaconing to becoming one of the major uh, ministers in that, that point of time until he was martyred. I think because he had that attitude of, God, I want all teach me, Lord, teach me. As a pastor, I just want y'all to walk in here on Sunday morning or Wednesday night and have an attitude with a smile on your face. So, man, I'm so glad I get to come to church. Oh, I am going to learn Amen. something. Amen. Amen. Instead of walking, you should see the view from my, at the pulpit for me sometimes. <laughs> sometimes people are dozing off. Sometimes they're playing a game on their phone. Sometimes they're doing other things. Sometimes they're just like, oh, staring at you. not staring at me and not getting anything. Yeah. I mean, my greatest desire is come on, kids, let's learn. Right? Maya, you're a preschool teacher. Yep. 
if those little two year olds walked in and they just sat down, come on, play. No. Come on, play. Come on, let's learn this song. No. Come on, why don't you get in here and let's get to know these new kids? No. But people, adults do this all the time in churches. No, I'm not going to praise God. No, I don't feel like opening my Bible. No, I don't feel like singing today. Then why bother coming? They feel like they have to. Maybe in some cases. But you see, I think that we cannot get into it. One of these, this is one of the most important gifts there is, the gift of faith. Because the gift of faith motivates us to, Nan, let me pray for you right now. Please do. I, we should because you know Nan, right? No, we, <laughs> I say that loving. I say that lovingly. We but I mean, Nan. guys, we should have that kind of an attitude of God. Okay, I want the gift of faith. So I started asking God years ago for the gift of faith, many years ago, and I saw it, especially on the mission field. I saw it in Honduras in 1992. That guy that became that his sight back and. Some other situations I saw. But I believe it's because I had been asking for a while, Lord, increase my faith. And then I started working on this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I noticed that I've been praying more. So now more opportunities. I've been praying boldly. Let me Woo! Oh, I love now. that adjective. I got my like oil and everything now. Woo! You're praying that, boldly? I've noticed that I'm... I'm Coming into more situations yes. where I need yes. to pray, whether it's Betty looking at me and doing one of these now type of things, <laughs> or if it's <laughs> so my aunt. Monday morning when I woke up, I told you I was in pain. Yeah, you were. Yeah, I've been praying over things a lot. Good, keep on. But like my aunt had to, my my aunt had to go in for thyroid surgery, and she put it on Facebook. I had no clue. I just went on Facebook. Boom, I saw it. And my first my instantly, and everybody says, okay, praying for you, you're in my prayers. I instantly went and, and personally. And prayed right there. I personally texted her and wrote up. Yes. Honestly, it was the most beautiful prayer I had ever read. And I was like, man, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's good, though. <laughs> that's good. But, but you know what was she, operating there? Maya, that's a gift of faith because mm -hmm. you, by faith, sat there and began to minister. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and write what you were feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay? It started with the servant's heart. Starts with the Listen, servant's heart. It, right it does with a heart that says, "God, use me." Yep. Right, mm -hmm. Stephen, yeah. Jesus. When that centurion started looking for him, he knew that he would get his servant healed if he could just find Jesus right. wherever he was. He wasn't going. Oh, I don't know if he's going to feel like healing today. No, because when you're so full of the Holy Spirit and power, you want to use it. Go ahead. Unlike a lady with an issue of blood, the discharge of blood. Yes. It is um, chosen. I, I cried there too. Oh, I did too. Everybody it's so did. beautiful. Yeah. But you know, she said, "I, I don't." It doesn't have to even pray for him. All I got to do is touch him. Right. And, and not even touch him. Touch his rope. Touch right. his rope. That's, That's all she right. needs to do. And yeah. And, and she was healed. I mean, that she was healed. And Jesus said, "Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Yeah. Your faith your has saved you." Your faith has saved you. Okay, what about when we feel inadequate? Well, last Sunday sermon, check it out on YouTube. <laughs> Inferior, unworthy, and uh, all that. Okay. Listen to Zach Williams, Heart of God. Mm. Which okay. we're doing for communion this week, so oh. that's your help. Okay, so guys, the devil does not want Christians growing. And fill it, being filled with his God's Holy Spirit. The devil doesn't want that because that means people are going to get healed. People are going to be helped. Go ahead. Uh, you got to remember too. It's the faith in Jesus is the only way you can get to God. That's, That's right. It. There's no other way. So you have to have all that faith in Jesus, not in yourself, so that you can boast or anything like that. That's but right. Only in Jesus. Okay? That's right. So if you put it in the right perspective, you'll be okay. That's exactly right, Pat. And how do we grow that? These verses up here, okay? It's growing our faith purposefully, intentionally. Wake up tomorrow morning. I'm going to grow my faith today. You know? 
in my oldest son's house, um, they've had this for years now. He made a, out of wood, it's a growth chart. You know, it starts down at the bottom, you know, and just goes up. So when I go to visit, they always measure me because they swear every time I come, I'm shorter. So that's one of the fun <laughs> things they do. Well, oh, let's see how much Nana has shrunk this year or whatever. But all the kids are on there from the time they were just six kids, from the time they were little, 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 and adults and whatever. And, of course, a couple of the guys have bypassed the parents, right? But baby Millie, one of my youngest grandbaby right now, at Christmas, she was uh, three months old. And they sent me a picture. They took baby Millie, and they stood her up against the growth chart and put her name on there, and this is where she was at three months. So she started out pretty daggone short. I think she was born 20 inches or whatever. So, I mean, she wasn't hop, she's not up to two feet or whatever. Okay. So, that is just a, an example, a metaphor. For we can start out really short, but we're still on the growth chart. Millie's on the growth chart. Oh, they put the dog. Um, uh, what's her name? Omac. Opal? Opal. Opal's on the growth chart. Opal. Opal's a big Omac. girl now. Omac, Omac is a big girl now. So, I mean, but all these kids and some of the nephews and nieces, too, anybody that comes to visit, if you want to be on the growth chart, you can be on the growth chart. So my number just keeps going down. But, but spiritually, guys, let's use that as a metaphor because we may start down here where baby Millie was at three months. But getting bigger, we're getting stronger, more than we realize. Amen. So... Allie, Bernie, do you have any comments or questions you'd like to add here? Or Pat, oh, let's go to Zoomies first. I want to start with last night. We had a treacherous drive from Missouri down to, we're heading to, to Georgia. And Allie was struggling because the rain came down heavy Ooh. and the bridges were awful, right, Allie? Um and I started going to Psalm 37, believe it or not. I said, it said, trust in the Lord. And Allie had just, after I just finished reading, she didn't know I was reading Psalm 37 back here. She, after, it was like the timing. She said, can you come up here? I can't see. I'm like, what? You can't see? She's like, no, I, I'm not seeing very well. And I need a second pair of eyes up here. It looked like a forest on the left forest on the right and it was just two one lane we're on one country road lane one going was it east and west and she just like i'm like this is bad what a gps why did gps tell you to go this way and i'm like i don't get she said well it's got to be the safest way go no this is not definitely not the safest way we should have probably gone to memphis after hearing from the fleet uh, owner he said oh i forgot to tell you she drove through Memphis, Tennessee on Highway 27 or something, number yeah. like 20 or 27. That would have gotten you there faster. Right. right. Oh, my gosh. The Lord opened up. Allie, finish the story after that. So, what happened? So, the Lord provided in a way, right? Do we lose you? We can't hear you. But you have to just learn to be still and be patient and just wait upon him yes. and he will do it. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that's that's way and we know to do that, even when we're in a scary situation like you guys are talking about. We know to do that when we are intentionally growing our faith, guys. We know, okay, this may be tough, Connie, everything you went through this past year was your health. And you know what? There were times that it was hard, hard to hang in there. But you know what? You did it. You did it. And you're on the other side of it. Amen. You know? And so we can look back at these times in our lives, no matter how hard they were, and we can go, okay, God, I, I have gotten stronger in my faith. Anybody else have a comment or question before we get off of here? I'd well, like to second what you said about her. You'd like to second? She has, she has helped my faith. And she I don't want has. To get back around for a little while. That's the truth. I mean, 
when you see stuff like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you hear stuff like that. Like, yes. I, I wasn't around for the whole for the whole thing, but you hear about it. She tells the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. She doesn't deny any part of it. No, she does not. Praise God. And that right here is the story. That's the testimony. That's that, it. That it's helps. the word of our testimony. Yes, yep. it helps. Yes, it does help. And that's what I was. That's what I was going to say. Go ahead. Was that what you know? What, Connie, what you went through, we prayed. Yes. And every good report we, and every bad report, we got, nope, not going to accept that. We're just going to keep praying. That's right. That's right. Every good report we got, our faith, everybody's faith, because we could see mm -hmm. God working. I think that's one of the best you know, examples. Right. You know, um, of seeing God work and knowing, you know, because we, that whole year, we were. Well, and then a few weeks ago on a Sunday morning, you opened up and just told some of how hard it was there for a while. And when you did that, I think that made all of us realize, wow, this was a real intense battle. It also somehow always comes out on the radio. Yeah, it, it does come out on the radio <laughs> show all the time. Yeah. But what she shared, it, 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 not the faith that she would be healed. I mean, you, you read that. You know, we just see that with that, but the the the, the healing that went on inside that mom yes. oh, is yes. the most complex healing and faith growth that there was. That's why when she prays with people. So yeah. the thing is, yeah, when she get grabbed, she call it the five pound ministry. No, no, no. 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 That's my head. head. Smack your own. But you know what? That's how we grow our faith. We go through hard times. We have sure. to rely on the faith. I'm going through one right now that's I ask God sometimes whoa why is it this so intense but I know that on the other side of this I'm going to be stronger than I ever have been Amen. Amen. and so the whole goal is what are our intentions do our intentions God help me grow my faith I want to have that gift of faith so that I can when somebody says I've, I've got this bad diagnosis say well wait a minute not too big for God let's do it right now let's pray and that's what God is doing in this body of believers. And hopefully all of you watching can take something from this tonight. We don't declare ourselves perfect in any area of faith. No. We are growing our faith that's right. on a daily basis. Anybody else have something to add before we get off of here? I got something. Yeah, go ahead. You know, I'll, I'll back a two forward. And it, it ends with, but the just shall live by faith. Yes. Okay. And and back and at Smith Wigglesworth, you talked about Smith Wigglesworth. Yes. He's got the ever increasing <laughs> faith. You know, the book, The Ever Increasing Faith. Oh, it's, it's one of my favorites. I have it. Fails. Yes. Huh? Yes, there's I have two, those. There's Thank two of them, but there's also hundreds of healing scriptures that he had, and, you know, the way he, he wrote it, and uh, God's generals, you know, and uh, if you go to Curry Blake, was a, I was a big fan of Curry Blake when I was younger in the Lord, okay? And Curry Blake talks a lot about faith too, also. And he okay. brought back John G. Lake's ministry. Yes. Supposedly, yes. you know, was chosen by John G. Lake's ministries to take over that ministry, which John G. Lake lived during the time of Smith Wigglesworth. He right. talks a lot. Uh, John G. Lake talks a lot about Smith Wigglesworth, and and Smith Wigglesworth, Wigglesworth also talked a lot about John G. Lake. Yes. So, so we've given you three. Thank you, Pat, for sharing that. Were you finished? I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, yeah, I'm done. Okay. Uh, we gave you three examples of books you can get off of Amazon, or really the way we're getting them now is off of shoptheword.com, and they are cheaper. Uh, it's faith, it's that, also cheaper on John G. Lake Ministries. John G. Lake Ministries, okay. Right, you can, down, you can download any, any copy you want of all the uh, books. Okay. You know, by Smith Wigglesworth. Okay, he's Smith Wigglesworth books. You know, he really didn't like the books. There were other people that wrote the books. From his sermons. Howard, Watson, from his sermons, people, yes. From his sermons, yes. He didn't write them, but they, it's from his sermons. From his sermon. Faith That Prevails is a Smith Wigglesworth book. Faith That Prevails. And the other one is Ever Increasing, increasing faith. faith. Pat, I appreciate you bringing those to our attention. And John G. Lake Ministries. But I would highly recommend those little books by Smith Wigglesworth because they're full of examples of him being called to somebody. Also, also the Smith Wigglesworth Apostle of Faith. Also yes, a that's a good one too. Apostle it's of Faith. It's only $10, okay? Yeah. Thank you for bringing those up. Those are great books, guys. They will increase your faith. 
So any question or comment before we get off of Facebook tonight, and which will be on YouTube here shortly, later, tonight or tomorrow? Any other question or comment? Have you learned anything tonight? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma All right, so we'll leave you with this. Faith is, you gotta build your faith if you're ever gonna get to the level of miracles and healings, okay? Miracles and healings are the result of you working on your faith. You don't have to work on the miracles part. That'll happen. God will just open the door. You don't have to work on the healing part. You just get in the word, grow your faith. It'll grow happen. your faith, and all the rest of it will follow. This has been Beacon of Hope Wednesday night Bible study with the Beaconites here in the room, the Roomies and the Zoomies, and Pastor Marcia and Pastor Jim, and we're glad he's doing better. We've exercised our faith because he's been a sick guy. So we're glad you're doing better, Pastor Jim. Sunday morning, 10 a.m. is worship time at Beacon of Hope. Zoom, you can go to our website, bohmglobal.com, tell you the Zoom ID and the Zoom password. Join us on Zoom if you can't come to the room, but you're welcome to come to the room. Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. Sunday afternoon radio show at 3 p.m. And go to our website to find out all those details. God bless every one of you. We hope to see you next week. We're going to talk about miracles and healings. God bless you.